Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call. It is Monday, June 16, 2014, and we welcome you to where you can tune in to Les Brown's Platinum Speakers, his Voices of Hope. We're so excited that you're here. Mr. Brown has made this platform available to each and every one of you as he's on a mission to create 100,000 Voices of Hope. This is Stacey N.C. Grant, Empowerment Specialist and Les Brown Platinum Speaker. I will be your host tonight, and I want to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers who had a wonderful weekend with their families and to those who are remembering their fathers who might be looking down from above. We say happy Father's Day to you once again, and thank you for being examples for our children to follow. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am so excited because you know that we do our utmost best to bring you the best of the best on Les Brown's Motivational Monday Night Call. And tonight is no different. Mr. Brown, he handpicked some of the most influential, most experienced, most thoughtful, and most thought-producing speakers on the planet through the Platinum Speakers Program. And tonight you're going to hear from one of those. He's an author, a lecturer, a mentor, and motivational speaker. He has actively been involved as a professional speaker for more than 30 years. He is a platinum speaker with the Les Brown Speakers Network, and much of his emphasis has been around relationships and personal development. He has been in demand as a conference speaker all around the world, including parts of Africa, the former Zaire, Togo, Ghana, South Africa, England, West Germany, Canada, the Caribbean, from coast to coast, all over the globe. In Seoul, Korea, he's been speaking to audiences of over 25,000 people. And he's had the privilege with sharing the stage with such actors as Ernest Thomas, uh, that's Roger from What's Happening, if you all remember that show. He's also just been involved and highly acclaimed in the written works that he has. He has been a part of a dream television network. He's been a part of the restoration of the family, a forum for the White House under George Bush. I can go on and on and on. And he also has an honorary doctor of divinity degree from Logos International University and graduate school in Jacksonville, Florida. If you think he sounds like an expert, he is. He knows what he's talking about. He speaks with passion. He speaks with sincerity. And he is a voice that tonight you want to take your pen and paper out because guaranteed you will not leave this call the way you've arrived once you hear from none other than the phenomenal and the incredible Dr. Charles Phillips, the empowerment guy. Dr. Phillips, are you here? I am here, Stacy. <laughs> Great to hear your voice. I am getting my pen and paper out, Dr. Phillips. Happy Father's Day to you. I know you're coming with a word tonight to inspire each and every one of our listeners. Well, thank you, Stacy, for that introduction. And to all of our listeners, I'd like to say a good evening to you from here in the East Coast. I'm in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, me and Barack Obama, we stay in this area, so we're trying to hold it together on the East Coast. But I am delighted to be on the call tonight. I have been a Les Brown Platinum speaker for more than 10 years and have shared the stage with Les personally many, many times across this country. And really, it has been my delight to be under his tutelage and to have been trained by the one and only Mr. Les Brown. And so I consider it a privilege and an opportunity that is given to me tonight to address those of you who are on the call tonight. I wish you a very happy Monday and a great Father's Day. I am one of those on the planet who is privileged to be called father. I have four grown children, and when I say grown, I mean they're grown and gone. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I've got three daughters and one son, and they've all married, and they've all got their own kids. And so I am in the second portion of my life enjoying my children, and they enjoying me. And so I appreciate you uh, wishing me a happy Father's Day, and I send that to every father that's on the call tonight and trust that you had a wonderful day on yesterday. But my task tonight is a civil one, and that is I have been given the privilege to speak to this virtual audience 
and to see what I can do from my perspective to give you some takeaways and some concepts and some ideas that will catapult you into a better future than you've had in your past. So tonight, I'd like to emphasize maximizing your potential. Let me say that again. How do you maximize your potential? One half of this year is already over. We're in the month of June already. And I'd like to ask you, how are you doing? Perhaps you made a New Year's resolution in January. I don't know where you are in that cycle here in the month of June. But I trust that if you have not maximized where you need to be so far, I trust that here in the sixth month, I can give you at least a few takeaways to help you to catapult you throughout the rest of the year and see if we can come up with a better you than we've seen thus far. When we talk about maximizing your potential, the word potential has within it the root word potent. The word potent, of course, is translated power. So that suggests or means that we have a potential power inside of us waiting to be discovered. We have a latent power inside of us waiting to be discovered. And I believe, personally, that as I speak to you on the phone tonight, I think that there are many of you that's listening to me who perhaps would agree with me that there is more to you than the world has seen already. I just got a feeling that you wouldn't be on this call tonight if you were not in that category, that there is more inside of you than you have demonstrated so far. I'd like to offer this for your consideration. Could you think about this with me for a moment? Everything and everybody comes on the planet with their potential already inside of them. Let me say it again. Everybody and everything comes on the planet with their potential already inside of them. Think with me for a moment. Birds fly, but they never went to flight school. Fish swim, but they never took a swimming class. What does that suggest? That suggests that what they needed to fulfill their potential was in them when they arrived on the planet. And may I submit to you that I believe that the same thing is true for humans. We all come on the planet with all of our full potential and the stuff that we're going to need to be our best, it's already in us. We're looking around for it. We're trying to find it somewhere else. But it is simply already in you. We simply discover what was in us all the time. It's, and, and to me, when I talk about potential, I can see it that it does not show up once we become adults. I see potential inside of our little people. Yes, in our children. How many of you have ever seen children standing in a line, in perhaps going to a lunchroom, or going out to play, and while they're in the line, there are some children that stand in line and they're quite content, yet there are sometimes two or three of them in the line that pushes their way up to the front of the line because something in that child says, I am not designed to be in the back of the line. And so they push their way and push their way until they get to the front of the line. Now, isn't that interesting? What is it in that child that says, I am wired to be at the front of the line? I believe if you track that child that demonstrated that at an early age, you are going to discover that there was a leader in that baby, even when they were small. What is that suggesting? That you had it in you all the time. So, wow, stop and think about that. Okay, let's take this a step further. How do we discover and maximize this thing called potential? 
let me give you two or three quick steps here. Number one, embrace your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Number one, embrace your uniqueness. With more than 8 billion people on the planet, nobody has your fingerprint. You ever thought about that? 8 billion people on the planet, nobody's got your fingerprint. I believe that's how bad the creator wanted you to be unique. I believe the creator was smart enough not to produce a lot of carbon copies. But his greatest work came from creating and making individuals who would demonstrate their uniqueness. Nobody can beat you being you. Think about that. Nobody can beat you being you. I mean, they might try to be you, but at best, they can only be second best. Your gift and your calling is found somewhere in your uniqueness. I have got to understand that I have got to embrace my uniqueness. Stop trying to be somebody else and find out and discover what's inside of me. I believe Anita Hicks, our platinum sister, would call that authenticity. And what is this? Who is this person called Stacy N.C. Grant? What kind of name is that for somebody? I tell you what, every time she introduces herself, she introduces herself as Stacy N.C. Grant, and she never apologizes for it. And I think, well, you go, girl, being your unique self. You are wonderful. You've got the iron team in your background, and you are just comfortable in your own skin. And I say that is the power of your uniqueness. Why spend time trying to be like somebody else, trying to act like somebody else, trying to follow trends? Why don't you start some trends? Why don't you look inside of you and see what it is that you are good at? Look inside of you and see what it is that you have brought to the planet and display that. If I say golf, you say Tiger Woods. If I say basketball, you say LeBron James, even though they lost last night. <laughs> but ideally, what you have to bring to the planet was already in you. And so may I suggest to you that one of the ways that you can literally maximize your potential is to stop and see what makes you uniquely you and be about fulfilling that and get comfortable in your skin and be happy. Yeah. Number two, the second thing I believe that's important for you to maximize your potential, not only embrace your uniqueness, but number two is to eliminate toxic people. Yeah, you probably heard that before, but I think that's a critical component. Eliminate toxic people. Everybody can't go into your future where you're going. You get to choose those who are going to get a front place seat in your life. Negative people are dreaming. They can take all of your potential and allow it to be dormant, and you will never, ever reach who you are supposed to be, accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish, if you continue to hang around toxic, negative people. Les Brown says it this way, OQP. Yeah, OQP. That is, only quality people. That's who I'm looking for, to put in my environment. I am looking for somebody who is going to enhance my life. Surround yourself with people who are going to make you better. Get around people who have your answer and get away from people who've got your problem. Toxicity is not an asset to your life. Find powerful, positive people and make them your new best friend. Monitor your surroundings. 
Look at who's around you. Who's speaking into your life? What kind of data are you receiving in your ear gate, through your eye gate? What are you exposing yourself to? May I suggest to you that if you are going to live life and be the best you that you can be, you are going to have to make a conscious decision to simply eliminate toxic people. And may I suggest to you that sometimes they may be a close friend. Sometimes they may even be family members. But if they are not enhancing your life, for God's sake, don't let them deplete your life. Make a choice. Make a decision that I am going to start today. I've been six months down the road, and starting today, I am going to make a conscious decision to be nice, but I will eliminate toxic people out of my life. Wow. Well, what about number three? Well, if I first of all understand that I've got to embrace my uniqueness, uh huh, then I have to eliminate toxic people, uh huh. Then the third area has to do with elevate your expectations. Hmm. Elevate your expectations. You are the only one that can do that. So you have to make a decision that I'm going to raise the bar on myself. You can always do more. Write that down. I can always do more. Also write this down. I can always do better. If you didn't die last night, that is a suggestion that there is more for you to do. There are better ways for you to do what you've been doing. You can reach heights that you never knew you could reach because you have the power within your hand to elevate your expectations. And what are you expecting? Are you expecting a humdrum life that has no potential of anything exciting? Are you looking at your life and trying to measure your destiny based on your history? Hmm. If your history has proven not to be as profitable as you think it should have been, then make a conscious decision, mark it down today, that I am going to raise the bar on myself. Because there is no doubt something is out of me that is still chopping at the bits and saying that you can do more. I've got to stretch myself. I've got to get rid of all of the excuses. I've got to pull on a I can do it attitude. And I have got to recognize that all of this is left up to me. And so I've got to recognize, boy, whew, I can either drift through life or I can engage life, face it head on, and literally make a difference. I can be better. Give you a quick testimony of my own. I grew up in Louisiana and I was a poor boy. I knew we were poor because poor people called us poor. Yeah, I told people about the poverty that I grew up in and many of them look at me and say, wow, Doc, I have never been that poor. <laughs> but that's my story. We were on welfare. We ate government cheese. We did not have a lot of clothes. I mean, if, if you can appreciate this, I've got six sisters. I'm the only boy in the family, and I used to wear hand-me-downs from my sisters. Oh, come on, everybody say, oh, poor thing. Yeah, yeah, that's where my hand-me-downs came from. I had my sister's clothes that they had outgrew. And, of course, they were male clothes. You know, they were the shirts and the blouses and the kinds of things that men and women could wear. But that's where my whole life was coming up. And then I got exposed to something called reading. And I found that I could escape into the never-never land of the story of the books that I was reading. And, boy, it literally changed my life.
Because I recognize that if I could change my world internally, I probably could change my world externally. And I'm here to tell you today, I am living a life that is absolutely mind-boggling. I have come from that poor little boy who didn't have much of anything until today. Wow. If I took the time to tell you a lot about my story, you would say, Dr. Phillips, you have got to be kidding. But I'll give you a couple of quick tips. I today am one of the top speakers in the country. Yeah. My mother used to whip me for running my mouth. Can you imagine that? She used to tell me all the time, Charles, you talk too much. Go sit down. And now people pay me to talk. Whoa. Mom, I love you, but you were wrong. I have dazzled audiences all over the world. I stood on a platform in Seoul, Korea just a few years ago and spoke to 25,000 people at one time, listening at them applauding intermittently as I shared my presentation. And I looked out at that audience and I said, boy, this is a long ways from where I started from. And so I saw potential in me. Nobody else saw it, but I continued to pursue I continue to stretch myself, and I have literally traveled to more than 20 different nations of the world, been a top speaker all over everywhere. I have been flown around in private jets. Yeah, let me say that again. Dr. Charles Phillips going to his next engagement, and the company sent a private jet for me to travel on. It didn't just happen one time. That's happened several times. And I'm sitting there on these private planes saying, wow, I didn't know life could be this wonderful. But I serve as Exhibit A of how you can maximize your potential. It has to do with what goes on inside of you. What are you pursuing? What are you after? What is it in you? that has not had expression yet. You must understand that potential is not something you go after. Potential is something you discover. It was in me all the time. Even as a little boy, running my mouth, I did not know my mouth would be my tool. Many of us, if you would just stop and get quiet for a moment, and look internally, you might discover something inside of you that you have been overlooking all of your life. Oh, my goodness. I believe that the rest of this year is going to be your greatest year because of this presentation you heard tonight. I believe that in closing, if we could learn a lesson from eagles who learn how to fly, do you know how eagles learn how to fly unlike any other bird? When an eagle is a baby, the mother takes that baby as it comes out of the season of the nest and all of the plushness. That mother takes that baby eagle to the edge of a cliff and drops it. Yeah, drops that eagle straight down and lets it free fall. Just about the time it gets ready to hit the ground, that mother swoops from it, touches it, brings it back to the top of the mountain, and drops it again. Whoa. And the mother does that 5, 10, 15, 20 times, over and over and over again. Until one of those times when the mother drops that eaglet, free-falling, coming to the earth at an alarming pace, that eagle would say, wait a minute, what is this on my side? I have a wing over here and a wing over here. Wait a minute, if I flap these wings, wait a minute, I believe I can fly. Yeah, that's what that little eagle said. I believe I can fly. And the wings didn't show up on the 15th time they were there all the time. That's your story. 
I believe there is an eagle inside of you. That's why you're on the school tonight. I believe there is a lion inside of you. That's why you're on the phone tonight. And I'm telling you, I believe that the best is yet to come. I'm out of time, but I thank you for yours. This has been Dr. Phillips. Stacy. Hey, I believe I can fly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm touching the sky. I am touching the sky. Dr. Phillips. Woo wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you this was going to be one that you didn't want to miss, and I hope you were taking notes. What a message tonight, Dr. Phillips. Thank you so much for sharing such an inspiring, encouraging word that we have it inside of us, and we have to look down and find those wings so we can start flying. Oh, my you goodness. How can, how can everybody stay in contact with you, Dr. Phillips, if they want to know more about the strategies that you've developed to help us fly and to just look down and realize what we have all along and how we can move that into action? <laughs> well, I think the easiest way is to go directly to my website. My website is called drcharlesphillips.com. Very friendly and very easy. That is D-R-C-H-A-R-L-E-S. T H I L L I P S dot com. No punctuations, caps are necessary. Again, that is D R C H A R L E S T H I L L I P S dot com. I've got my phone number there. I've got some videos there in the website, and you can just kind of hang around the website and if you can, if you would. Go to my website and shoot me an email with your email address. I'm going to send a free gift to you coming straight out of my products because I'm on this call tonight and you're on this call tonight, Stacy. I'm going to give them a gift. Go to my website, put in your email address, and I'm going to send you a free gift. Again, that's drcharlesphillips.com, D-R-C-H-A-R-L-E-S-P-H-I-L-L. IPS dot com. Stacy. Awesome free gifts too. Ooh, I feel Christmas came early. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Dr. Phillips, uh, I know we have another commitment coming up, but do you have about two minutes? And if we open up the lines, then let callers tell you what they got from this message. I feel some folks flying. Like I think there's going to be a. a news flash or some kind of travel advisory because too many people are flying through the air just ready to go on to the next stage in their life. <laughs> Do you have two minutes, Dr. Phillips, to hear from our listeners? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. Excellent. Well, stand by, everyone. All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. We're going to open up the lines briefly, and then I'll be giving you an announcement at the end of how you can stay connected to all of Les Brown's platinum speakers throughout the week. But if you have a question or a comment for Dr. Charles Phillips, press star six to unmute your line. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi, this is Madeline. I have a, one question for Dr. Phillips. Yes. When you were talking about getting rid of toxic people, that is what I'm in the process of doing right now. Um, but one of them is a very, 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 very close friend, and I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so what, what, because we are so close, we call every, we talk every day, we text every day. Um, her children is close with my children, but I just feel that we are in two different spaces right now, and I have to separate myself. Okay, well, I, I certainly understand that. And it is not always easy, so don't think that getting rid of toxic people is just a no-brainer. But if you embrace the idea of being honest and say, you know what, I heard a doctor on the phone the other night that gave me some tools, and I have decided I'm going to try what he has said because I'm trying to go to another place in my life. I love you. I really do. But I, give me a little while to try this stuff that this doctor was talking about. And if you want to put it in perspective, just tell her that you have an appointment with the doctor to see <laughs> if you can take what this doctor has said. And if you put it in that light and in that frame of, of thinking, it might not be as abrasive 
and maybe you can get away with that. What do you think? That sounds awesome, and I'm going to do that. That's what I've been doing. I've been slowly like, okay, you want to go out? No, I don't want to go out. You want to do this? No, it's kind of like you know, saying no to the norm of what we normally do, but now I'm like, I got stuff to work on. You could go party or do whatever you do, but I'm trying to work on, on stuff for my business, so I, I kind of got to focus, and I can't be your party girl anymore. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I think you should be encouraged because I think you've already sent some signals out there. And so yeah, if you I have. start to make the adjustment, maybe it won't be as a such a surprise to her, and you can say, look, I am going to try what this doctor said because it sounds like some good stuff to me. And if yes, you wouldn't exactly. mind, if you would drop me a line at my website, I would love to hear from you again. I certainly will. Thank you. Hoping the best for you, my dear. Thank you. Yes, I hear yeah. Mel's yeah, voice. Yeah, Myron, Myron Pimpton, Washington, D.C. Thank you for your message. It's really uh, quite a type. I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for those comments. I appreciate that, brother. Dr. Phillips? Dr. Yes. Phillips? Yes. Yes. I, I really love your message today. I have uh -huh. been invited to, uh, to have an interview to go and do some public speaking. And because okay. I love your talk tonight, I believe I can fly. You're going to hear from me. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Thank you so much. Very good. You go get them, girl. Go yes, get them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Hey, good afternoon. Excellent. This is Tony from Miami. Okay. Yes, sir. I and, hear you. Um, go right ahead. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I was able to catch the show tonight. I came in. I was a little exhausted. I, I took a nap, and, you know, I... I rolled over and I realized, I said, hey, wait a minute, it's like 10 minutes after, hey, let me get on the line, you know, and I jumped up and, you know, found the number and got on the line, and, and I'm glad I did, and your message was very encouraging and, um, you know, potential equals power, um, you know, that's amazing, and, you know, our uniqueness, you know, we're one of a kind, and one of the things I realized is when you talk about eliminating, your, eliminating myself from toxic people, you know, I know that there are people, uh, friends and family members that, man, we used to run together and we used to do a lot of things back in the days. And, you know, some are still doing those things even into their mid-adult life and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't coincide with my life. So what I have to do is, yeah, I, I, live, I you know, exit myself from them but not from their life. You know, I just say, well, listen, y'all go out to the clubs, you know, y'all go out hanging on the corner and things like that. I'm not there, but... Hey, the door is always open. If you want to change, man, I'm here. You know, let me know. And that's basically where I'm at. And I sent that message out there. Not in so many words, but for the most part, they understand that. And it works both, uh, best for both of us right now. Thank you. Well, good for you, man. You you got on 10 minutes late, but you got the gist of the message. So I appreciate you being on the call tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. Great. Okay. Excellent. Eddie, we'll take one more caller before we wrap up and I give the announcement. Hi. Hi, Dr. Hi. Phillips. Hi. Okay. Hi. We'll let these two, two the two female voices out here will be it. <laughs> two beautiful right ladies. Ahead. Let me hear from them. Stacy, let me hear from these two beautiful ladies, please. All right, Dr. Phillips. I'll let both of them speak. Go right ahead, ladies. Okay. Well, one at a time. Hi, Dr. My name is Myra. Uh, I'm hi, Kentucky, and I am glad that I. This is my first time, and I am so glad there was a confirmation about getting rid of toxic people, but also wow. uh, the reading um, internally changing yourself so that it can come external. That um, was just really um, a great point for me, and Good. to expect better to. Elevate yourself. So yes. it's just so much that I wrote down besides uh, the the little um, I guess the little the piece of R. Kelly that you sung. I believe I can fly. Yes. But uh, it, I don't want to say that it was just it's it's outstanding. I, I appreciate this. I'm Les Brown and the lady. I didn't catch her name when she came on to introduce you. But this is just. Uh, this is awesome. I'm going to try to get a group of women to start doing this with me on Monday nights. This is really awesome. That would be a good move. That would be a good move. Thanks for being on the call tonight. Appreciate your comments. Yes. 
Thank the day you. and the one, other one lady. Other lady. Uh, one other lady. Uh, uh, hello. 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 Hi, Doctor. Hello. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Hi. Um, my name is. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm doing great. Hi, Doctor. Hello. 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 Hello.